After the initial release of Dishonored 2, I think it's wise to be extra careful of Arcane's and Bethesda's latest title, Prey. Having played the opening hour demo, this video is going to let you know what you can likely expect in the full release. The good, the bad, and the debatable. Let's start on a positive note and leave my many concerns for later. The premise of the game has you playing as Morgan Yu, a scientist experiencing amnesia who's trying to escape a space station that's been taken over by alien creatures. Now I don't want to talk too much about the story since the normal aspects of character development, pacing, writing, and overall immersion are difficult to judge with just an hour long demo. However, I will say that it did a good job in raising the stakes in an otherwise tame introduction, and the way it lays out its unknown plot points really does entice you to play past the demo section. In terms of gameplay, players of the Dishonored and Deus Ex series will feel at home here. The game has you exploring for consumables and loot for your survival, but that's not all you'll be searching for. You can also find information on people's computers which range from bits of lore to a code for a locked room nearby. It's a system that rewards people who take the time to explore the area and that goes well with the ability to choose your own path to reach a certain destination. Arcane Studios has pretty good experience in utilizing the play your own style type of mentality as shown in Dishonored 1 and 2, so you can expect wide levels with a good sense of verticality. More importantly, Prey seems to do away with Dishonored's rather basic progression tree, instead opting to use Deus Ex's more detailed option. Skill points are earned from special items called Neuro Mods, and you can use these to customize your character to suit your playstyle, whether that be more combat or stealth focused. The standard upgrades like being able to lift heavier items or hacking into locked doors are also here as well. Besides general exploration, you've also got to engage in combat with many of these strange creatures. Despite the unexceptional gunplay, the saving grace may be the fact that you can combo your weapons together to make your attacks more deadly. It's an interesting enough concept, and it would be good if they went with a more tactical route with it by having you plan out your encounters, kind of like the original Bioshock. Expanding this combo system to include both new guns as well as your eventual psychic skills would make up for the boring weapon upgrades, not to mention that it would be more suitable for the game's thriller setting. While I'm confident that Arcane can execute the first-person exploration rather well, I think the potential of the combat system is heavily dependent on the dynamic of enemy encounters, which is something that we don't have a lot of information on just yet. One of my biggest concerns is the fact that the demo isn't available on PC, and the possible implications of that decision. Make no mistake, a PC version of some demo does exist because we have YouTubers uploading footage from a Bethesda press event earlier this month. While those videos indicate 60fps support, the game at the press event was likely played on a very specific set of components. The most that was mentioned in one of the comments of those videos was that the game was running on AMD hardware at 1080p, but that's too vague to be of any help whatsoever, because we still don't know how it's going to run for the range of cards in between its minimum and recommended specs list. I understand that Dishonored 2's terrible port was caused by using the IT Tech 5 engine, but just because Prey is using the Cry engine doesn't mean that everything is destined to be alright. And more to the point, faith is not with Arcane and Bethesda when it comes to performance these days. In any case, I do have concerns with how the game plays as well, mainly with the enemies and some aspects of presentation. You see, Prey's initial monsters are things called mimics, and they're named as such because they can transform into any item in the game. So a lot of the times, the game will try to jump scare you by having these mimics pop out of nearby objects, and these scares are annoying at best and frustrating at worst. I think I get what they were trying to go for. Prey encourages you to explore the map to find loot and lore pieces, and it can be compelling to have that risk factor that every room could potentially have a hidden enemy within it. The problem is there is often no proper setup on the possible presence of said enemy, and that makes many of the scares feel cheap and unsatisfying. For example, look at this screenshot and pay attention to the book at the bottom left section, the one next to the podium there. That is a mimic in disguise. Now I can walk over the book with nothing happening, but the game jump scares me when I'm trying to read a note near the book. Here's a video example, and fair warning, there will be a huge volume increase when I interact with the note. The game also insists on blasting insanely loud music whenever it thinks an enemy is nearby, even though there actually isn't anyone around. Here's another clip, and keep in mind there will be a sudden increase in volume.
Finally, said music also doesn't necessarily stop once you've beaten all the enemies nearby, and it only tones down when it feels like it in a very abrupt fashion. Here's a final video clip. As a result, the music isn't a reliable indication of whether you've defeated the enemies or whether an enemy is around in the first place. Couple that with the cheap jump scares and it's not long before the game annoys you one too many times. There is a way to make players fearful of the ever-present threat of a lurking unknown, but I don't think that this is the way to go about it. I'll be the first to admit that my concerns may not turn out to be a huge problem in the final product. After all, I'm basing most of them off an hour or so of gameplay. Prey could very well run fine when it's released, and its jump scares may tone down significantly past the first hour, especially when it introduces other enemies that don't rely on mimicking real-life objects. With that said though, this is still a game that's under Bethesda's anti-consumer review policy, so I think it's important to be extra meticulous with whatever information we have so far. Ultimately, I enjoy its exploration mechanics and possible use of combining weapons, but I absolutely hate how the enemies and music itself try to scare you. And that's what I think you can expect from Prey. Thank you so much for watching, please subscribe and comment if you feel so inclined, and most importantly, I hope you found this video helpful.